Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, yesterday, the Speaker of the House of Commons, John Burko, praised MPs for being dedicated, hard-working, committed public servants. They were debating harassment in public life following last week's report from the Committee on Standards in Public Life. Much of the abuse MPs receive is on social media platforms, and the Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, said the government will look at proposals to create new legislation to protect people. Here's a flavour of that debate yesterday. Everybody should be treated with tolerance, decency and respect. Which party and MP stands for how they choose to vote, campaign or present themselves should not be met with vitriolic and disgusting messages suggesting that they should be hung in public or get what's coming to them or perhaps most unacceptable of all that their unborn child should die. Yeah, 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 yeah. The report makes recommendations for government, for political parties, social media companies, the media, law enforcement and everyone in public life. This reflects the, flat, the fact that tackling abuse is a joint responsibility. We will consider the recommendations in detail and we will respond to them in due course. When politicians get death threats as a result of how they vote in this House, that is not the primary responsibility of social media companies. If anyone is responsible, it is the headline writers who accuse judges of being enemies of the people and elected members of Parliament as being mutineers and saboteurs when all they are doing is exercising their their civil right to cast their vote in this House of Commons. In voting as you think fit on any political issue, you as members of Parliament are never mutineers, you are never traitors, you are never malcontents, you are never enemies of the people. You are dedicated, hard-working, committed public servants doing what you believe to be right. John Burko, the speaker there. MPs have heavily, heavily criticised social media companies for not doing enough to tackle hate crime. Senior bosses from Facebook, Twitter and Google appeared before MPs today. They were accused of providing a platform for extremism and allowing people to use social media to further the ills of society. Here's our media editor, Amal Rajan. Harmful content online takes countless forms, but not all of them are illegal. There's the hate speech that attacks individuals on the basis of attributes such as disability or gender. That's quite separate from extremist content, which propagates the worldview of those ranging from so-called Islamic State to neo-Nazis. How easy is it to find this extremist material online? Well, it's very easy indeed. I mean, here is effectively far-right material. This is One campaigner working closely with MPs on the issue believes social media platforms lure vulnerable adults into the extremists' web. Fiaz, how big an issue is soft extremism on social media platforms? It is a significant issue. We, it's a significant issue because actually the material clearly is not removed. It's not illegal in the eyes of social media providers. But the other factor is their algorithms are directing individuals who may have a, an aggressive worldview, and the algorithms direct them to join other groups which may have similar content. Order, order. Today, MPs grilled tech companies as part of a parliamentary inquiry into hate crime. The committee chair said Twitter still had it removed an offensive tweet it was warned about in March. Standards. That tweet is still up on your platform. Why is it? I don't know the answer to that question. I really do think that we should all kill a Tory. Just think of the benefits if each family in the UK were to kill just one Tory. That's on Twitter, Miss McSweeney. Your code says you will not tolerate violent threats wishes for the physical harm, death or disease of individuals or groups. How does that comply with your code? Uh, we have 500 million tweets a day 
Uh, we have 330 million users. Twitter is used in multiple, multiple languages. You are actively recommending what is effectively racist material into people's timelines. I will ask our reviewers to look at Red Eyes TV and get back to with a good and solid response to what our reaction is. As I said, we are looking at how we can scale those new policies we have out across areas like hate speech and racism. Isn't the real truth that your algorithms and the way in which you want to attract people to look at other linked and connected things is that actually you are, your algorithms are doing that grooming and that radicalisation? But that's not how Facebook sees it. But I do recognise we have a, a, a problem, which is a shared problem, with the police, with yourselves, with civil society organisations, of how do we address that person who may be going down a channel which can lead to them being radicalised. MPs now have a personal stake in the fight against harmful content online. But it's not clear that turning tech giants into censors is the best way to safeguard democracy. Anna Moll is here with me now. MPs did sound rather exasperated today. The big question, what more can be done? Well, Sophie, everyone can agree, or most people agree, what abusive content is. Everyone agrees that there's too much of it, but no one agrees on what to do about it. And there's two reasons for that. The first is a question of principle. These companies, Facebook, Twitter and Google, say that they don't want to be in the business of censoring the internet. They're not publishers like the BBC or like a newspaper. They're platforms that give everyone a voice and they rely on their community to police that content. But the second issue, the bigger issue, the harder issue, issue, I think, is a question of scale. There is just so much of this material uploaded online every single minute that ultimately you're never going to be able to control it completely. And that's not to uh, be defeatist, but it's just a pragmatic point of view. And Facebook and Google have said they're going to double the number of moderators looking at this, but ultimately this is a war without end and our best tool isn't going to be more human beings, but smarter computers. Amal, thank you. Well, I'm joined now by the chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee, Yvette Cooper. She's had representatives from Facebook, Google and Twitter before her committee this morning. Welcome to the programme. Um, you've spoken, obviously, to representatives from those companies. You asked them about taking down abusive tweets. This is Twitter that you'd previously requested be taken down and to Google about offensive videos. Are you satisfied with their actions? No. I mean, I think they have done more compared to the last time that we heard took evidence from them back in February. They have appointed more staff. They are starting to increase their standards and they are starting to search for things. So that is progress. However, we've had too many examples of things that we had raised with them before, which they clearly recognised are either illegal or breach their own community standards, where action was not taken, either not taken fast enough or not taken at all. And that included some really anti-Semitic tweets. It also included um, a far right, the National Action, which has been banned, video, which it took about eight months to get taken down. And I really had to go to the top of YouTube itself to make sure that that was fully taken down. And what's their YouTube explanation site. for not doing it? Each time, the kinds of explanations they give are basically, we're working on it. Look, we're doing better than we were before and we are doing more. And they certainly are doing more than they were, but these are the biggest companies on the planet now. They have huge reach, huge power and also huge wealth and resources. That's why we are going to keep pressing them to do more, because in the end, public safety is at risk here. Now, Twitter yesterday suspended accounts related to Britain first. Do you think that's because they were going to come before your committee um, that they just got round to it? Well, obviously, I, I think it, if you, you depend on having the parliamentary committee, really, it shouldn't rely on having mm. parliamentary hearings for uh, things, organisations like Twitter or Facebook or YouTube to do the right thing. They should be able to do that on their own without the deadline of a parliamentary hearing. It is welcome that they have taken action. We did question Facebook on why they haven't taken similar action and on the way in which, really, we need these organisations to look at the offline action activities as well as the online activity if what they're doing is is uh, you know actually breaching those standards right I mean I listened into some of the hearing this morning and get the impression that they are trying to introduce new technology to deal with it because actually new Twitter accounts have already appeared haven't they representing characters in Britain first so in a way are you ever really going to get these companies to do what you want them to do in terms of banning and taking down these accounts altogether new ones will just appear 
There is always an issue about the pace of change and the pace of technology and having to keep up with that technology. But I think it's clear that they just can do more. You know, we found too many examples of where they simply weren't moving fast enough. And also where, look, if it was the Home Affairs Select Committee reporting things to them, well, in the end, they did respond. But actually, if it was people just responding, pressing the button, clicking and so on, often ordinary complaints were just not addressed fast enough. And there was another issue that really concerns me, which is the way in which some of that technology is actually promoting extremism. So if you go on, for example, one far-right racist site, then actually they will recommend more. And so there is effectively mm. a process of grooming that can take place through technology. And if it's taking place with the far-right extremism that we were challenging, the real fear is it's also taking place on some of the Islamist extremism as well. This was always inevitable since the invention of the printing press. As long as somebody can spread around what they think about somebody else, whether they do it by word of mouth, whether they do it in a pamphlet, whether they do it in letters. I've, I've, all my life in, 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 in politics and the media, I've, I've received horrible letters from people calling me the most appalling But has things. it got worse in recent times? I don't think so. No, the letters were vile. I just open them, screw them up, laugh, throw them away. Uh, if, if people are abusing me on social media, I don't read the social media. You can't stop people doing these things except by a system of censorship. And you would have to have hundreds of thousands of censors on, on Google and on Twitter and on all the rest, actually pre-approving everything before it was put up. That's just not possible. Is legislation no, the answer? Well, and I don't think also that this is actually about pre-approval at all. And also I think there is a, a difference between promoting free speech and making death threats to people. You know, we have a criminal line that is drawn oh, about it's against death the threats. law, yes. Exactly. And we also have a criminal line about promoting extremism and think the issues, the yeah. kinds of things that become terrorism. So National Action, for example, that we were raising with them is a banned organisation because of its danger and the government's assessment of the terror So what threat. about legislation so, to actually enforce these companies to do it? So we are now going to be looking at that and the Select Committee will be looking at that, at what other measures are needed. We already recommended that there should be fines against social media companies that are simply not removing illegal or dangerous content fast enough and are not responding. But we also want to look more widely at other legislative and other proposals because I think something needs to be done. Right. So you would be a fan of seeing some sort of legislation making the tech companies be seen as publishers, not platforms, and then they'd be liable for the content on their sites. We've asked them for more evidence on that. So we want to look. Other committees have made those proposals, but we haven't looked at that yet, and we obviously want to do so. But I think in the end, this is actually about promoting democracy. It's about promoting free speech because it's about making sure that nobody's voices are drowned out by racism or by extremism and about making sure that all voices can be heard. Um, social media is our new forum for debates, illegal. for discussions. It's really important that everybody should feel part of that and you don't get some people being drowned out by extremism or by no, discrimination. Nobody is drowned out by extremism. Uh, illegal, Actually, I agree with you. If it's are. illegal, people, people should be stopped. I don't like your... I'm, I'm suspicious of your word dangerous. I've known so many politicians with so many different ideas of what might be dangerous if it appeared in print. I, I think the law is the law and the law should be sh the law should be adhered to. But I, I think a wide range of opinion, in, 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 including offensive opinion, including violent opinion, as long as it doesn't in, incite breaking the law, I, I, I really don't think that once you start trying to distinguish between what's free speech that people are allowed and what is free speech that people aren't allowed, it is a slippery slope. But we do have laws about incitement, yeah, we do. don't we? And we also, yes, we we, of course, you need a very robust debate. You need people to be challenged. People, of course, will be offended. There needs to be those sorts of robust debate, especially when it comes to holding politicians is, to account. Is it putting but politicians are, entering public life? I mean, that was, the, that was the comment that was made by the Committee on Standards in Public Life, that social media was the most significant factor driving harassment, abuse and intimidation during the general election. Election and that it had reached a tipping point and it would put people off entering politics. Well, nobody who doesn't want to be abused, sometimes in very unfair terms, should enter public life because you always will be. But people shouldn't face death threats. They shouldn't find that there's the kind of threats that then their children and their families and their staff start to become fearful. And that's the kind of thing that we've seen and the sort of targeted harassment and bullying and that kind of threats, which can mean then that people don't speak out. It's our job to speak out in a democracy and we want more people to be able to speak out. We should be able to do this in a way that doesn't involve the kind of, the kind of poison that can end up undermining democracy. Poison. 
we have to stand up term. for democracy and not let it be undermined. Diane Abbott brought up the issue of headlines calling people mutineers and traitors. Do they have a responsibility um, to regard and look at those sort of headlines if they then lead, no. as some MPs have claimed, to death threats? No, they absolutely don't. Uh, of course, I think the Daily Mail's stupid to talk about enemies of the people. I think the Daily Telegraph is stupid to talk about mutineers. But a newspaper has every right to characterise those people whose political opinions it disagrees with in any way that they like that is not illegal. Right. Do you think they do have a responsibility? I think with rights comes responsibilities. Nobody's talking uh, about legislation when it yeah, comes to those front the pages. Union would but have I said think that. there is a responsibility on those organisations to recognise if that then leads to death threats, if that then leads to consequences. They do have a responsibility to take very seriously, and most editors do. They do take very seriously the consequences. Just of the somebody they a run. mutineer is is uh, cannot be thought to be calculated to lead to well, a death threat. Well, we know there's the targeted photographs choosing particular people, targeted of photographs, and. Well, that's what they look like. And that's exactly, we know what they were trying to do. And what they were trying to do is to undermine debate on a really important issue that needs to be widely debated. All right. And they should take responsibility for that. Yvette Cooper, thank you for coming in. One of the Conservative MPs who defied Theresa May on a crucial Brexit vote has revealed the level of online abuse that she's received as a result. Anna Soubry has submitted a 35-page dossier of threats of violence against her to the Commons Speaker. The threats include calls for her to be hanged. Sky News has now confronted some of the people who sent those abusive messages. Our senior political correspondent Jason Farrell reports. There can never be a place for the threats of violence and intimidation against some members that we have seen in recent days. Yesterday, Parliament was forced to address the levels of abuse that have been measured out to MPs in the wake of last week's Brexit vote. Remain supporting MP Anna Soubry has given Sky News 35 pages of insulting tweets and emails that she received after supporting an amendment to the Brexit withdrawal bill. Some of them say she deserved to be hanged. One said she should live life in fear. Sky News contacted the sender of that by phone. Your, some of your language is quite strong. I hope you live the rest of your life looking over your shoulder in fear. It's the least you deserve. That's quite threatening, isn't it? No, no. If you read it in context, that's what she said. Um, somebody had written, and. But you're saying I, you're saying I hope you you're saying I I hope you live yeah. in fear. Is that what you hope? Well, yeah. I don't see why not. What she should live in fear, looking over her shoulder. If she's you're twisting it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. Uh, I'm not twisting. I'm just. I'm just yeah, reading what yeah. you've written. Then we called another who wanted to see Anna Subri hanged. That's pretty threatening language, isn't it? I don't care what you think. I don't like them. They should be gone. It's not what I think. I mean, most people would think that's pretty disgraceful language. Well, I don't care what you think. Is condemning them in the same way that even if you thought capital punishment was good for murderers, surely you don't genuinely think that's something that's deserving of politicians. We should never have done away with hanging. Are you genuinely serious? You think they should be hanged? I don't think we should have given, done away with hanging. But to, to, to say that they should be hanged is, is a debatable point and maybe I'll re regret that. OK. We showed the recordings to Anna Subri. What do you make of that? Actually, I'm heartened because when you spoke to both of them, it was quite obvious that it was the heat. It was the keyboard warrior, and it is being whipped up, in particular by two newspapers. I think the second gentleman was a direct reference that had triggered him from an online article that he'd seen in the Daily Mail. Several Tory MPs have blamed Conservatives supporting newspapers, such as the Daily Mail, for singling out rebels, as well as the Telegraph for calling them Brexit mutineers. The Mail has got a long history now of being deeply offensive. For a Conservative MP to say the Daily Mail has a long history of being deeply offensive... On I mean, Brexit? You're not reaching out to your core voters there, What, on you? Brexit? Well, I mean, I'm people so sorry. who read the Mail, I'm so a, sorry. a lot of them vote Conservative. A lot of them do, but there aren't an awful lot of people that buy the Daily Mail. And that doesn't... I'm sorry, but if we're going to be having an honest debate, mm. I'll have an honest debate and I'll call people out when they are wrong. 
Yeah. And I wish the Prime Minister had done that. What do you think the Prime Minister should have said? And do you think there is concern that it is a Conservative supporting she should, newspaper? Uh, in my opinion, the Prime Minister should have said, I defend the right for them to say it, hmm. but they were wrong to say it. Since the murder of MP Joe Cox by a right-wing activist, MPs have understandably been more anxious. If I'd have had this in my inbox, I would be really worried. How do you feel? I do get worried, yeah. I always used to tell my constituents where I was going. So I went to a great carol service in Bramcud yeah. on, on Sunday night. And, and I, I haven't told, I didn't tell my constituents that's where I, I was going. Anna Subri says in the case of the abusers we called, she hopes they've now realised their language was unacceptable. Jason Farrell, Sky News. Well, in response to Jason's piece, the Daily Mail said it's preposterous to suggest that the Mail would call for violence of any sort. In a statement, they said no one has been more outspoken than the Daily Mail in condemning the viciousness of social media and in particular the threats and abuse directed at politicians of all parties. Straight to Westminster, where we're joined by the Labour MP, Rupa Hook. Hello to you, Rupa. Thanks for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. Um, what's your experience of um, social online and other social abuse? I mean, look, I've had uh, two particularly Islamophobic uh, sort of tweets. One of them is still being investigated by the police. But, I mean, what I find is certainly it happens more to women than it does to male MPs, and it's people who want to silence opinions that they don't agree with. So, I mean, I've had it for being pro-European. I've had it for speaking on subjects like abortion. I had plastic fetus dolls sent to my office after I spoke out on abortion. Uh, and I've had, um, goodness me, on the Palestine issue as well, I... Uh, generated some heat. I think I was called Talibanistic bitch after that particular uh, speech I did in the House of Commons. And I do think it's not enough to just say sticks and stones. I think that um, the media platforms have to act. What do you want them to do? I mean, I think people like, for example, before I was even elected, so in 2015-14 um, this would have been, there was a fake Twitter account of myself uh, called Dr Hook and it was spewing out all these bizarre messages. Um, and, you know, that was a kind of impersonation of myself. And uh, I reported it, I pressed the report button, nothing happened until I was elected. And then uh, I think we all had an email, new MPs from Twitter, saying, is there anything we can do for you? And I said, yeah, shut down this bogus account. They did very swiftly. But if you're not in a position, if you're not a member of parliament, they're not going to take you so seriously. And we've seen the logical extension of what happens with uh, these online trolls. I think that these media platforms, Facebook and Twitter, should take um, misogynistic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, anti-Semitic, uh, all of these sort of threats more seriously than they do. I get lots of online abuse as well. You know, high-profile women particularly do. And I put it down to um, saddos who are, you know, drinking White Strike and the keyboard warriors are waiting for their mum to shout them for their tea. And that's how I dismiss it. Why do you feel that that is not an, an, an easier and a more appropriate way to do that? It's just not acceptable behaviour. I mean, maybe kids in school should be taught more about civic life and respect and tolerance and those kind of things. And, I mean, yeah, most of them are nutty people that in a previous era would have been ranting to themselves in a corner of a pub. But just social media, uh, the World Wide Web, means they can broadcast to a much wider audience. And, yeah, most of them have only got a handful of followers and it just feeds them with the oxygen of publicity to give them attention. But when I had one of someone, you know, threatening to come and get me, I sort of forwarded it to other people and they said, yeah, you do need to tell the police. You don't know as a person in public life, yeah. you know, the sort of job we do, we're out there every day, um, that you just don't know if it will be a, a nutter. I mean, I know Anna Subri okay. a year ago had yeah. someone who said they were Joe Cox her. I mean, that's appalling. Sadly, and that's, we're out of time, you know, but we appreciate you taking the time to speak to us this afternoon. Uh, good luck. Thanks a lot.